Kyle Larson wins a controversial Brickyard 400. Let's talk about everything that happened. Welcome back to Break Hard, I'm Matt. Yes, like I said, Kyle Larson won the Brickyard 400, his third out of four Crown Jewel events on Sunday at Indianapolis, but it did not come without some sort of controversy. There are actually two forms of controversy for Kyle Larson this time around. I would say overall, I would give this race mm, probably a 60, if we're being completely honest. Passing was incredibly hard. Kyle Larson, though, with just over 30-ish laps, what, 37 laps left in the race, somewhere around there, he restarted uh, P23 on the field and won the race on speed, passed all of those cars and got to the front. Well, other than when like Brad Keselowski had to peel off because he didn't have fuel, which we'll get to in a second. But Larson, he was able to pass cars. Everybody was saving fuel. He didn't have to save fuel. Cliff Daniel said, dude, you just gotta go. And he drove from 23rd to first. One of the only people that was passing cars all day. Yes, people were saving fuel, but at the end of the day, they all had the option to do the same thing that Kyle Larson did, and they chose not to do it. Larson is your winner. Pass inspection. All those things are fine, done, dandy. Going back to Charlotte with the trophy, he and Jeff Gordon and Rick Hendrick were in the front stretch grandstand signing autographs after the race and after they kissed the bricks. Just very Joseph Newgarden-esque of them. Roger's not climbing through that fence hole. There's just no way that's going to happen whatsoever, but... The controversy, let's talk about that real quick because it has people up in arms. So on the first overtime restart, Brad Keselowski is your leader. Brad Keselowski was trying to run an impossible fuel strategy like he was Scott Dixon, and it just wasn't ever going to work more than likely. Maybe if that race stays green, feel bad for Kyle Busch bringing out that final caution. He didn't need that. He had a top 10 run going. That sucked for him, and it also robbed the fans of a really natural finish because it was going to be a great battle between Brad Keselowski, Ryan Blaney, and Kyle Larson. Would Brad be able to stretch it? Could Larson get around Blaney for potentially the eventual win? We'll never know. On that final restart, though, not the final restart, on that first overtime restart, my mistake, first overtime restart, um, Brad Keselowski is your leader. He picks the inside, Ryan Blaney picks the outside, and as they're coming to green, pace car peels off in and... <laughs> Brad Kozlowski followed it down pit road and everybody was like, what is happening? He's out of fuel. So now that moves Larson up to the front row. Ryan Blaney is now on the outside. He is technically the leader on the outside. Larson fires first. Larson launches. Blaney has to catch up. By the time they get to the start finish line, they're basically side by side. One guy called into Sirius XM I was listening to on the way home. I was on grounds on Sunday and it was a fantastic time. We'll get to that more later. But one guy called into Sirius XM and was like, Larson doored the 12 card. That's why he didn't win. I don't think he ever doored him if we're being completely honest. So NASCAR rules that restart. Fine. Blaney fuming pissed on the radio. He said that NASCAR should call off the restart, let them re-choose. He would have chosen differently. He's the leader, this and that. And he said everything always works out for NASCAR's golden boy, that being Kyle Larson. And he was not pleased whatsoever. And I can understand that argument. But this has happened before, and NASCAR has not thrown a caution, or extended the caution, rather, to re-rack and let everybody re-choose. They just haven't done that. Unfortunate for Blaney. Completely understand the frustration there. Massive wreck on, on that restart. John Hunter Nemechek is involved. He knocks the wall out of the way. It's just really bad all around um, there. Knocks the wall out of the way. Alex Bowen said his dash was on fire at one point when he was caught up in that same wreck. So big, big wreck there. Red flag the race, this and that. Come back on to the next restart. Kyle Larson on the final restart. He launches, clears Ryan Blaney out of turn one. He's through turn two. He's into turn three. He's into turn four. Ryan Priest, meanwhile, had spun out. When they were going through turn two, Priest spins out, blows his tires out. He's now stranded on that apron section off of turn two. Um, IndyCar fans know exactly what I'm talking about. You saw Paddle Award swing all the way down there earlier this year to try to block Joseph Newgarden or at least break the draft. That's where Ryan Priest was sitting at. Is he out of the racing line? Maybe. So NASCAR held the caution because initially he started to roll. Like they thought he was going to get going. Kyle Larson is now into turn four, coming down the front stretch. Priest is sitting. He's he's dead in the water back on the back stretch there. And NASCAR holds the caution, holds the caution. And we're like, are they going to throw the caution or is the white flag going to come out? Because they had plenty of time to throw the caution. And instead, NASCAR displays the white flag. Larson takes the white. Next flag will end the race. He gets into turn one. NASCAR throws the caution flag. Race over. Kyle Larson is your winner. And that is where the tinfoil hat crew is coming into play here because they do think that NASCAR intentionally held that caution to make sure that Kyle Larson would win the race. I didn't have any tinfoil to bring up with me to the studio today. I only had parchment paper. That doesn't look good. I don't have silver spray paint. If I did, I probably would have spray painted it and put it on my head. Regardless, 
Kyle Larson is your winner, and fans were not pleased about that. They think that NASCAR intentionally held that caution to ensure Kyle Larson winning. And I'll be honest, I can't speak for them. I have no idea why they held the caution in that situation because we've seen them throw the caution for things just like that before. We've seen them throw the caution for far less than that as well. And over time, me thinking out loud right here without having talked to absolutely anybody, I think that they held the caution in this situation knowing that there were a lot of cars that were borderline on fuel and they did not want a repeat of what we saw at Nashville earlier this year where we had five overtime restarts and it was an absolute chaotic end of the race and a bit of a calamity and kind of a bad look for the sport. Now, I know there's a ton of fans that will be in the comments and TikTok on YouTube, everything like that, that will say that that is exciting. They want to see that happen. And I, I can understand that. I would have been totally fine with ending the race. Um at the scheduled distance, at the end of 400 miles, and if Brad Keselowski is able to coast around and win the race, then Brad Keselowski was going to win his second Brickyard 400. I was fine with that, still fine with that. I don't need five overtime restarts, and I think maybe NASCAR doesn't want to see that happen either, and that could be why they held the caution flag in this situation. I don't know that. I'm just speaking out loud here. So, yeah, it was an interesting day. I think I gave it a 60 at the beginning. I was there in person watching it and watching from pit road, humble brag, is always a different, you know, bit of a different experience than maybe what most fans are going to get, what you get on TV or what you get in the grandstands as well. So I'm kind of trying to piece it all together. I have not gone back and rewatched the race. I will do that uh, this evening. So if you want a full recap on my thoughts, I'll have an episode of Break Hard Show out sometime, probably Monday evening by the time I get around to it. So uh, from what I saw, Passing was really, really hard. I was watching the scoring monitor. I was watching the timesheets. And it basically seemed like everybody was kind of running the same lap time within a tenth of each other. Nobody could really gain or or drive away from John Hunter Nemechek drove away from the field. Hats off to him. That 42 car brought a ton of speed this weekend as well. But for the most part, it was really, really hard to pass. It was a track position game. Great strategies playing out all race. A lot of fun strategies trying to follow along with all of that. Really enjoyed that aspect of this race. In terms of on-track passing, super difficult. That's why I gave it a 60. Um, I'm happy that they're back on the oval. That was way better than anything we saw on the road course. I want the oval to remain. If we're going to Indianapolis, you have to race on the oval if you're not going to go across the town to IRP. It was there on Friday night. Fun time. Um, but for the Cup Series... Yeah, I think that you have to stay on the oval, but you got to figure out how to make passing just a tick easier. This car is just not it when it comes to especially flat tracks and high speed flat tracks. It's really not it. Pocono was a struggle. The strategy, don't get me wrong. The strategy was really interesting, but I would still like to see them make passes. The Xfinity race on Saturday, was it manufactured with the package that NASCAR brought? You can make that argument, but it was highly entertaining. It felt like a lot like an Indy Lights race. If NASCAR Cup Series could just get a little bit more of a run, a little bit more there at the end of the straightaway to help get them by without having to have a huge run, I think that would make this race just that much better because I think it has potential to be good, just not with what we saw today. Like I said, not the worst race I've ever seen, but you know, could have used some help. So I'll go back and rewatch the entire race. I'll have a more, you know, thorough recap on this, but Kyle Larson is your winner. Controversy was following him. He also said, hey, be back for the Indianapolis 500 next May, which I obviously had a two year deal. We'll talk more about that as well in another video. But Kyle Larson is your winner controversy around it. Let me know in the comments what you think. Like and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on TikTok at Break Hard, Instagram and Twitter at Break Hard Blog.